Now today we're talking about a misfire code. So we'll go over a number of different things to look at, including the injectors which live right under here. We'll talk about the coil packs and the spark plugs. We'll do a compression test. So there's a number of different things you can do. I'll start off with the easiest and then moving along to things that are a little bit more complex. Now the first step is pinpointing which cylinder is misfiring. You could tell there's a misfire if the car is really uh, bed idle, it's shaking. You will certainly know if the car is misfiring even without the check engine light on. So this is a scan tool. If you do not have a scan tool, just go to your local auto parts store. A lot of times they'll read the code for free. And let's see what we're dealing with here. So in my case, I have P301, that's a cylinder one misfire. So let's go ahead and see what's going on with cylinder one. Now the number one cylinder in my case is on the left-hand side or the passenger side. So I have cylinders one, two, three, and four. Now I have plastic pieces here that I need to remove. So we'll first remove this section and we'll also remove this section and get clear access to all of the parts that we need to work on. Now these are just 10 millimeter fasteners holding on these plastic covers. Now the flip side is you may be thinking how do I find cylinder one on my vehicle or whatever cylinder uh, problem you have. You could try Google Images. A lot of times you can quickly dig up diagrams showing all the cylinder numbers on your vehicle. Uh, also visit a forum that deals specifically with your vehicle. Just do a little research and uh, typically you can have uh, success rather quickly. Now let me just quickly explain what you're looking at. Right back here, these are coil packs. These are connected directly to the spark plugs, which you'll see in a moment. So this is coil pack for cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, and cylinder four. A little bit forward, we have the fuel injectors. So we have an injector for each cylinder. Cylinder number one, cylinder number two, cylinder number three, and number four. So the first thing and the easiest thing is swapping out the coil packs. Now the reason why I want to do that is I want to see if there's a problem with the specific coil pack for cylinder one. So what I'll do is just remove cylinder number two, the coil pack, place it here, and then take this pack and place it here and start the vehicle. Now if the check engine light comes back on showing you have a misfire for P302 or cylinder two, then I know the pack is bad and I need to replace it. So it's the fastest thing you could do. A lot of times when you have a trouble code for um, a misfire, it's just the coil going bad. But again, it could be a number of other things. So I'm just removing this fastener, which happens to be a 10 millimeter. And then there's an electrical connection right here. Right where my thumb is, there's a tab, which I should have removed first, but that's okay. Pressing the tab. Do this. There we go. And then I pull this out. And this is your coil pack. Now the other thing you can quickly do, since we're here, is check the spark plug. And if you if you've never done that before, this is just a spark plug removal socket. And the reason behind this is you want to see the condition of the spark plugs. And on the end of the socket is a magnet. And there's your spark plug. And as you can see, this one is very, very clean. Now, if you remove the spark plug and it's all gunked up with uh, oil debris, it could just be the spark plug also needs to be replaced. But that means you have a problem most likely inside the cylinder. And we'll talk more about that when, when we do a compression check. So I've reinstalled the spark plug and I just want to swap out this injector. Now this coil pack will place in cylinder number one. Okay. And this is the coil pack from number one that was here before. We'll place it right here. So we'll just reconnect everything, start the vehicle and see if there's a change in the trouble code. So you go for a test drive, you come right back and you check the engine code or the trouble code. And if it tells you now that you have a trouble at cylinder two, which would be 302, 
then you know the coil pack needs to be replaced. Purchase a new one and you're done. But let's say you do this test and you still have a problem with that same original cylinder. What's the next step? Okay, so now we're back underneath the hood and don't be alarmed if these look like I replaced them. Sort of a habit of mine, I just grab some purple power and just clean everything up. Again, it's just a habit I've been doing forever. But that being said, the next thing I want to verify is that there's power getting to this coil pack. This may be sort of remote. In other words, I want to make sure that the wiring is in good shape. This will also check the relay. A lot of times you have relays that run these coil packs. I just want to verify everything is in good shape. So to do that, I'm going to use a digital multimeter. So this is what a multimeter looks like. Many of you already have one of these. If you do not, they typically go between $20 to $25. An absolute must have. If you plan on doing your own auto repair, a good multimeter and a scan tool, you can get a lot done. So that being said, you have a number of different settings, as you can see. A number of different settings. In this case, we want the volts DC setting. AC is household current, so you don't want that. Make sure it's on the DC setting. And then the multimeter has two leads. You have a black lead and a red lead. Now black is ground. This goes to a good metal point on the vehicle. Now we'll just turn the ignition key to the on position and verify that we're getting power here. So I'm just going to turn the ignition key on. Don't start the vehicle, just turn it to the on position. So I have the black lead going to ground. The red lead will go to the harness connector. Chances are you will not have a problem here. I'm just doing this because maybe your vehicle was involved in a flood, a collision, maybe you just purchased the vehicle and you have a problem. Always a good idea to check the wiring. So let's check the first connection point. There's no change. Again, we want to see 12 volts worth of power or battery voltage and there we go so that verifies that we're getting power to the coil pack but if you do this test you don't see a reading check the wiring you may or you will have a problem with the wiring check also your relays specifically the ignition coil relay now if you're curious on where the ignition coil relay lives typically they live inside the vehicle and under the dash so for example I have a fuse a number of fuse locations right here and if I pulled off this plastic cover I would see a number of different relays so what I'll do in a couple days I, I'll follow up on how to test an ignition coil relay but again chances are you won't have a problem here so we're at the point where we still have a problem with this number one cylinder we've swapped out the coil packs that did not resolve the issue you could even try swapping the spark plugs but in my case that spark plug was very clean I know that that is not an issue we know that power is getting to the coil pack so really ignition wise we're okay but let's try the fuel or check the fuel side of the equation so right here we have the fuel injector so this is the injector for number one so if I pull off this harness connector right there as you can see we have two prongs. Now I can test this injector with the multimeter. So again, I have my multimeter. Now in this case, I want to do an ohms test, which is a resistance test. Now that's the omega symbol on the multimeter, okay? So just hit in my case, I need the mode. That's not it, Oop, maybe I passed it. Yep, there we go. So right here, that's the omega symbol. Now I'm on that setting to test for resistance. Let me just try to set this up so everything is in one screenshot here. Just to make this easier, let me grab some alligator clips. Okay, so all that we're doing, let me just zoom in here. All that we're doing, we're taking the two leads from the multimeter, and I will clean this up in a second, and just touching the injector. That's it, and we should see a reading, a good injector, typically between 9 to 14 ohms and to make this easier on my end I tend to use alligator clips you don't have to use these but again just makes it easier when I uh, do these videos to just hook up alligator clips so I'm just taking one end of the alligator clip directly to this guy this is really so you can see everything in one screenshot 
And then, taking this guy, place it on the other end. Okay, and again, we should see 9 to 14 ohms. Let's see what we have. Okay, so we have 12 ohms. So that verifies that this injector is in perfectly good shape. Now, in the past a couple of years ago, I did a video specifically on injectors. And I had some comments that you cannot test injectors like this. And in fact, you can. This is uh, what a dealer would do. Uh, really back in the day before scan tools became so sophisticated. But that being said, if you don't trust this technique, let me show you a different way. Now the flip side is you can test the injector while cranking the vehicle. Now what I mean by that is this fuel rail is attached to the engine with a couple of fasteners. If I remove these fasteners, this entire railing peels off. And on the end of the injector is just an O-ring to prevent any fuel from spilling on top of the engine. So they come right off. Now what you could do is place that injector in a plastic bag, zip tie the end of the bag, and then just crank the engine. Now you don't want the engine to run, so you can disconnect the coil packs so the vehicle won't start, but you can just crank the engine and you should see fuel spill and really spit out of the injector. You don't want it to leak, it should be spitting out in a sense. And if you don't see that, the injector is bad. But I will say this, years ago I had a 1990 300Z and within 18 hours, two injectors went bad. And I tested the injectors using a multimeter. One injector had no reading, the other one was something like 900 ohms. It was way off the charts and I had to replace those two injectors. So you can use the multimeter. If you don't trust that technique, then again, just remove it, place it in a bag and see what you have going on. So just like we did with the coil pack, we want to verify there's 12 volts worth of power getting to the fuel injector. Now, chances are at this point you've pinpointed where the problem is. Typically it's the coil pack or the injector, maybe the spark plug is shot. But at this point, if you still have trouble, there's only a few more things we can really check. So at this point, let's make sure that this is getting power because if it's not, the fuel injector cannot fire. So again, I have the negative lead of the multimeter going to ground. I'm on the volt DC setting, and we should see 12 volts worth of power. And there we go. So that verifies power is getting to the fuel injector. Now again, if you do this test, and you're not getting a reading here, check the wiring, make sure everything's in good shape. The other thing is check the relay. There's a fuel injection relay. And I'll follow up within a few days regarding the relays but you want to verify that power is getting here. So we verified that spark is good. We verified that the fuel is good, but now we have to check any mechanical failure inside the engine. In other words, wear and tear. The only way to really do that is with or by a compression check. Now to do the compression check, I want to stop any fuel from getting to the engine. So what I could simply do is pull the fuse for the fuel pump. So if I take off this fuse cover again, and let's find the fuel pump, which is right there. One, two, three, four. It's a 15 amp. One, two, three, four. This is it right here. So what we'll do is start the vehicle. It may start just for a moment, then it will quickly die, and then we can go on to the next step. So we'll attempt to start the car. It may not even start. Sometimes they may start for a moment, but just crank it. Okay, that's good. Now what I'm going to do is remove all four coil packs and remove the spark plugs. Now when you remove the coil packs, try not to mix them up. I tend to keep everything as it was. Yikes. So this is what a compression tester looks like. You could typically rent these from your local auto parts store. Amazon, I believe, has them for like 30 bucks. Actron, for example. I'll have a link for you guys in the description box below. But that being said, this is just testing 
the health, the health mechanically of your engine, the pistons, the rings, the valves, things like that. So as you can see, we have a number of different adapters. All that this is doing is matching up the threads of the spark plug. That's all that's doing. So in other words, we're going to turn this where the spark plug lives inside the cylinder head. Now I'm expecting this to be perfectly fine. If you pull your spark plug and it's just completely blackened up, looks disgusting, it's not, the car isn't running right. In other words, you could tell because if this is all gunked up with oil, you have something going on inside your engine. So you need, this is a good idea certainly to check if your spark plug looks horrible. In my case, I'm expecting this to look pretty good. I don't think we'll have a problem here, but let's just plug this in. Okay. So again, I'm just taking that adapter from the kit and you just want to place it where the spark plug lives. So in this case, we're checking cylinder number one. The last thing we need to do is just open the throttle and we'll crank the engine. So again, this just goes on top. Okay. Now to keep the accelerator down, I just have a 25 pound plate to keep that on top of the pedal. The flip side is if you have someone to help you, have them hold down the pedal and crank the engine. So we're just going to crank the engine and see what the reading is. Now this is a very healthy reading and it's just a testament to Honda's well-known reliability. They make excellent four-cylinder VTEC engines. But that being said, let's say you do this test and you're within 60, 70, 80 PSI. What you want to do is check the other cylinders as well just so you can get a comparison. But typically, if you're well under 100, it's not very good. And what you can do is a wet compression test. And I show this on a separate video we did uh, regarding a 240Z. And you can really diagnose if you have a problem with the rings, the valves, and so forth. But this is very, very good and a very healthy reading. Now, let's say you perform all of those tasks and you still have trouble. What else can you check? Well, number one is the fuel quality. Maybe the fuel is old. The car has been sitting for some time. You need to drain that fuel and apply fresh fuel. Now we have a separate video showing on how, on how you can pump that fuel out of the fuel tank using a wet dry vac. It's not hard. Now if that does not work, the next step is checking the fuel pressure. Now this you need a very specific gauge, which I do not have unfortunately. But really you just attach this to the fuel system. You start the vehicle and you look at the pressure. And if the pressure, you should be around 50 PSI, but if it's quite low, then you need to pull out the uh, fuel pump, check the filter and the fuel pressure regulator. Chances are if you have this trouble, it's either the coil pack or the injector. But nonetheless, you could check these other things as well. Now, very quickly, you may be thinking, why did I have the trouble code on? I did not. I'm just doing this as a how-to. In my case, I just disconnected the uh, harness connector so I can get that trouble code and show you the steps on how to test everything. But again, chances are it's the coil pack or the injector, but go through these steps. You can really pinpoint where the problem is. So thank you for watching. Any questions, comments, please leave it below. We'll see you next time.